welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, folks, I rarely do things that are practical. You know, I, I mean, most of what I post here is uh, is history. It's uh, it's features on uh, it's it, it's features on a personality or a, a favorite magical figure that I, that I admire and look up to. Uh, I talk about theory. I, I rarely do things that are practical, but, but the reason I'm doing this, I, I have been performing. I've been performing uh, with the same set of ropes doing the professor's nightmare for at least 35 years. I have not changed the ropes. I use the same ropes that I've been using 35 years ago. And, and the reason I stick with them is is it just feels so perfect. I, I have actually made other sets up. Uh, I, I read in in uh, one of Silly, Silly Billy's books uh, a, a Professor's Nightmare routine where the ropes are shown to be of equal length. They are put in a bag and given to a spectator to hold. And then the ropes are shown to be three sets, uh, three ropes are shown to be unequal and they're made equal and then when the spectator opens the bag and removes the ropes they're unequal over here so it's a transposition effect and so I made up uh, some extra sets in order to do that and I always, and by the way this is a really good thing to do always duplicate your props alright so you if you're going to have two sets of professors nightmare ropes for a one routine you actually need four sets um, and you, you do that in case something happens you know you have you have backups um, but I, I rarely do things that are practical but I wanted to share this with you because I've seen lately I've seen a trend in rope magic and the trend is this people are putting tape around the end of the rope to prevent the ropes from fraying. Uh, first of all, the tape will not last long. The tape itself will get yucky. Uh, and, and the tape itself makes the rope look gimmicked, in my opinion. Uh, I don't like to see tape on the end of a rope. It's just not my thing. If, if you like it and you do it, that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm saying it's not for me. So I want to give you an instructional on how to prepare rope for magic. The first thing you want to do is you want to select soft rope that feels good in your hand. Now this rope, in my opinion, I just grabbed it quick because I wanted to do this demonstration. This rope is a little hard, it's a little stiff. It's, it's not the rope I would have chosen. I want something that's very soft and pliable, especially for Professor's Nightmare. But even, even cut and restored rope or ropes through neck or something like that. Rope magic, by the way. You can do it close up, you can do it for one person, you can do it for 200 people. It is one of the most ideal uh, 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 tools for presenting magic. So I love rope rope magic. But here, here's, here's what happens with rope. See, it, it, it frays at the end like this. And that's, it looks horrible and that's a problem. So what you do is you want to select really soft rope to begin with cut it to length. Now, I'm just going to cut this anywhere. It doesn't make any difference. Cut it to length. So you have the length of rope that you need for whatever you're doing it with. The, the next thing you want to do, this, this by the way, doesn't have a core in it. Most rope, however, does have a core inside. And what, what I mean by that, you have, you have little ropes or strings that run through the rope that give it, to make it stronger, to make it more substantial. You want to pull out the core. And that, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that to you because this is this rope does not have a core. But you want to get rid of the core because it makes it softer and more easily easy to manage. Then you want to use your Elmer's glue to take care of the fraying. And like I said, I've been using the same set of ropes for 35 years that I, I applied Elmer's glue to to stop the fraying 35 years ago, and it's never come undone. I kid you not. I use those ropes. I use at least weekly, sometimes, sometimes many times a week, and the fraying has never come undone. So what you do is you take a little bit of the Elmer's glue, and see, I just dab it on the end there like that, and then 
do this do this just just rub it in there so that gets nice and closed okay so you got that now you want to do the other end as well so pick it up do it again put a little bit in there and give that a rub and there you go that folks you see how good that looks no tape it, it just and it, it hold it will hold forever let me tell you something it will hold forever now I, I, I like to do that with my Elmer's glue it gets on my fingers when I have to wash when I'm done this presentation get this off my hands uh, but you want to make sure that your glue isn't backing up in there and ruining the whole bottle so folks I hope you've enjoyed this that's the way I prepare my ropes even if I'm doing a cut and restored rope I don't want the ends to be frayed. Now, you know, cut and restore rope, you're going to have frayed ends at the end of the routine. But, but still, when you start the routine, you, you have this nice, clean look. And that's the way I want to present rope magic. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below if you've not done so already. Please comment. I love your comments. I will see you next time. Have a great day.